inside this family phenomenon. Here we go. Take the wacky antics of the monkeys, add a pinch of the wholesome Osmond family, and a heavy dose of the kind of fan frenzy that greeted the Beatles, and what do you get? The Jonas Brothers! fans may wince at the comparison to their beloved Fab Four. But for today's teens and tweens, these brothers from New Jersey, and yes, their real brothers, are the hottest ticket in town. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, you know the Jonas You must be delusional. The brothers burst onto the scene last year as the opening act for Miley Cyrus. This summer, they're out front with top billing, playing to sold-out audiences around the world. Twenty-year-old Kevin, the extrovert, is on guitar. Eighteen-year-old middle brother Joe is the comedian. He's lead vocals. And youngest brother Nick is the subdued musical mastermind. At 15, he's the boss. The musical talent comes from dad, Kevin Sr., a former pastor and musician. Mom, Denise, a sign language teacher, often carted the boys from suburban New Jersey to Manhattan for countless auditions. I was three years old and I was telling my grandma that I wouldn't get off the coffee table because I was going to be on Broadway and I had to practice. At age eight, Nick made it to Broadway as a street urchin in Les Mis and middle brother Joe played in La Boheme. I didn't want to sing originally, and I ended up being on opera on Broadway. Not to be outdone, oldest brother Kevin landed a number of national commercials. E-Brain is my personal electronic bud. He talks like crazy. I think everyone in America assumes that you are pushy stage parents. <laughs> Do you get that a lot? We saw parents that their entire existence and, and their self-worth was wrapped around whether their child was on that stage. We don't live there. They say the boys pushed themselves. They formed a band and started playing schools, churches, anywhere people would listen. They were signed to a record deal, but were dropped after their first CD failed to sell. It seems like it was rough. A year of just disappointments. What, if anything, do you think you've learned from that? I think we could have easily said, all right, well, let's do something else. Yeah, I think we, we kind of had it in our hearts that this is what we wanted to do. Undaunted, they promoted themselves on the Internet, posting homemade videos, and their 30,000 friends on MySpace alone caught the eye of Hollywood Records, which is owned by our parent company, Disney, who gave them a second chance. Since then, it's been a rocket ride on full blast. People magazine amazingly devoted an entire issue to the trio. These are boys who really have values. They've talked about wearing purity rings. They talk about going to church. Their mother and father travel with them. So these are kids who the parents can feel their daughters can support. We hear over and over again that these young men are so nice. They're such good boys. Is this for real? <laughs> Most of the time it is. <laughs> What the heck is your secret? Well, we've worked throughout their life to try to make them good men, not just good boys. They're certainly well-mannered. We were invited on their tour bus as the family drove from San Francisco, my hometown, to their next gig outside Sacramento. And that's Coit Tower. Oldest brother Kevin gave me a private tour of the Jonas's home away from home. Yeah, um, these are our bunks. It's a little messy because, uh, you know, it's all good. We live here. This is Nick, this is Joe, uh -huh. I'm up here. You know, we have our own TVs in the, in the bunks right here. They're flipped down plasma screens. The bus has a, a full-on shower in here and Fantastic. the bathroom. So after the show, we'll quick out. We'll leave, like, right from the stage, right into our bus, and we'll shower before we... Yeah. I asked right. Mom Denise, how do you discipline rock stars? It's been challenging because they don't have a lot of freedoms. What are you going to say? No, you cannot buy that expensive piece of clothing or... Mostly it's been like cell phone use or no internet. I asked about the purity rings they still wear, but they didn't want to get into it. It's not the vow of, of abstinence till marriage. Uh, however, I think, that, you know, as teenage boys, it's probably not something they want to talk about all the time. They clearly don't want their love lives under a microscope. 
Nick reportedly had a relationship with Miley Cyrus that ended last year, but they never talked to the press about their romances. Instead, they pour it into their music. For guys who write their own songs, you get your hearts broken a lot. Yeah, it's, it's good sometimes when you're heartbroken, because then you can write a good song. A great... You're the Jonas Brothers. Who breaks your hearts? Um, um, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Which is why Mom also keeps her eyes out for other potential distractions. As a mother, do you think, my son could be seduced by some floozy? <laughs> some groupie. Exactly. Right? Of course you think that. You think so you um that's why I'm around. That's why I'm on the road. <laughs> While minor detours creep up on the tour, nothing was scarier than when Nick's health took a dramatic turn. Just like on stage, the brothers tell the story in unison. I lost fifteen pounds in two weeks. I I weighed hundred fifteen pounds. I went down scariest to, thing ever. Went down to a hundred. His eyes were like sunk in Remember when um, we went swimming one day and I could see like his his like Ribs. his his back and bones. I was like scared to death. Nick was rushed to the hospital and diagnosed with type one diabetes. And I have to wear this pod because it delivers insulin into my bloodstream. He wrote a song about the experience, which is on the new CD. A little bit longer and now be fine. <laughs> Their faith helped them through the crisis and continues to play a role every day, even backstage. Father, we thank you so much that we could be here. We thank you for the people. And we pray tonight that they would be inspired, that they would be encouraged. Bring it in. But along with the big life lessons, there's still everyday life, which has gotten a lot harder to conduct. How do you keep those dentist appointments and normal things going? It's challenging. It really is. We just sometimes are surprised, and I can't forget that we have to be careful you, know? you forget you're the Jonas Brothers yeah oh completely <laughs> I, I, we went to the dentist right before this tour and I took two of the boys and we had to get a police escort out of the building their future they say will include more acting as well as getting involved in all aspects of the music business our co-star in Camp Rock Demi Lovato we um, wrote and co-produced um, six of the songs on her yeah. record so your producers on her record six yes. of the songs yeah co-produced yours Fifteen, yeah. record producer. That's kind of big. You still go to a pediatrician, young man. <laughs> <laughs> These young men have already achieved and earned more than they ever dreamed possible. Last year, roughly 12 million in profit. This year, the sky's the limit. But some things, as they say, are priceless. Like the hero's welcome the Jonas Brothers received when they went back to their neighborhood ice cream joint. Even in the craziest moments, you'll catch us like looking at each other, just smiling. Like this is. It was crazy. a total movie moment when we got off the bus. This yeah. lady goes, "Welcome home, boys!" And it was just it like, was like, cue the music. Yeah, yes. We have a saying, you know, we're living the dream, baby, living the dream.